web browsing on a PC or XT class computer with 640k of RAM. That's not possible. Oh, it is. How did that happen? Well, we'll find out here on Al's Geek Lab. Keep watching. This video is sponsored by the very wonderful people at PCBWay. PCBWay are the leading electronics and prototyping manufacturer. If you've got an idea, you can use PCBWay to turn it into a reality. PCBWay can build PCBs from just $5 and build them for you in around 24 hours. Now, what I really love is that for people that suck at using a soldering iron like myself, you can upload your PCB file and have PCBWay assemble it all for you. PCBWay also do 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and so much more. They are widely reputed by us in the retro computing community as being the go-to supplier of your PCB needs. So if you've got an idea for an electronics project, why don't you give PCBWay a try at PCBWay.com. After all, that is the PCBWay. We thank PCBWay for sponsoring Al's Geek Lab. Now, let's get back to the video. So I've actually shown this in a short on my channel before, but that's that's a long time ago. So I thought I'd bring this right up to date and show you this release in 2023. I'm going to show you J.H. Howard's GitHub page a little bit more near the end of this video. But I just thought I'd show you the micro web web browser because it's insane. Um, this guy, J.H. Howard, what he can do in his in his coding time, I do not know. But it's actually a combination of Michael Brutman's TCP stack. So he's not reinvented the wheel and used his own TCP driver. So if you're familiar with Michael Brutman's TCP stack, the great thing is it uses that reuses that code effectively to um, make the TCP stuff go. So if you've already got that on your PC or PCXT or something along those lines then this will kind of just work, which is awesome. So what is it? Well, it's a web browser. Is it a fully graphical web browser? Well, kind of. It's a text mode web browser in a graphical display. By that, I mean it's not like Lynx, which is a text mode browser within the 2UI text user interface. It's fully text mode. This is a graphical mode application. Um, so you need Hercules monochrome or CGA or better to make it work. But effectively it's in graphics mode. All right, let's have a quick look. So this is the GitHub web page here on the left and you can see it's called Microweb DOS web browser. Um, and it's got a screenshot there of it working. I think that looks like um, CGA mode. It's slightly lower resolution in, than, the, uh, than the shot I showed you there on my own PC, which is kind of over there in the corner. Now, um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. Um, it's awesome. And combined with new websites like the ones by Action Retro, if you haven't checked out Action Retro's YouTube channel, then you definitely should. He's awesome. Um, he's made a uh, couple of websites, one called 68k.news and another one called frogfind. Um, 68k.news is, by the way, is really nothing to do with the 68k microprocessor. It works on every website, so don't worry about that. But basically, uh, 68k news is for old web browsers and old machines, and it works really well. So it basically strips all the garbage, like JavaScript and all the rest, from the websites and just shows you the plain text so you can browse it with old versions of Internet Explorer, Netscape Navigator, and of course, Microweb, which is awesome. So what do you need to actually get this running? This is the cool thing. You really need nothing. You need the basic bare bones PC, just with a little bit more RAM. So 8088 CPU, so it's the original IBM PC and above. And you also need 640K. So you need a fully tricked out IBM PC. You can't have like a 256K machine or a 128K machine. You really need that full amount of RAM. I haven't tested it with less than 640K, but um, you don't need anything more than 640K. Um, so for example, the EMS or XMS drivers are not required to get this working. As I said earlier on, you need a Hercules monochrome, CGA, EGA, or VGA. Now, I found a little bug. I have an EGA card on my machine, and so to get it running from the DOS prompt, I had to type microweb E uh, to force it to go into EGA mode. For some reason, it thought that my card was a VGA card. Eh, not a big deal, but just FYI. 
uh, if it starts up and says a VGA card is detected and you don't have a VGA card, member the TAC E. Uh, obviously needs a network interface. However, it does say that it's possible to use a serial port with the Ether Slip driver. I haven't tried that. Um, but yeah, I've got a network card in my machine. Go see how to set up the uh, Michael Brutman TCP driver and a packet driver and all that goodness with the whole networking thing. I've made a video on setting up networking and internet connections on this sort of a PC, so check that video out. I'll put it, the link in the description and the link up here somewhere. It should be about up there. <laughs> um, and a mouse, uh, not that one, obviously, um, a really old fashioned mouse. It was probably what you have, but that's not required, but makes life a lot easier. Um, so that's all the requirements, really, really bare bones requirements to make this work. Um, now, <clears throat> limitations, it does say it's text only, so yes, whilst it is a graphical application, you will only see text. And as you can see here in the demonstration that I'm running, you can see that images just have placeholders, like the Google um, banner is just a placeholder. Now, it does say that this may change in a later release. Now, I believe that the initial commit, the first version of this was, I think, 2021. Um, might be wrong with that. So it's been around for a while. Um, so that graphic stuff isn't around yet, but there you go. Now it does say HTTP only, no HTTPS support. And as you probably know, the uh, the web is slowly transitioning to a HTTPS only world where all the pages are secure. However, there is a workaround here. And as I'm showing you right now, you can use the uh, web page called FrogFind, which I talked about just briefly at the beginning. And what FrogFind is doing is downloading all the content that you're going to for you and then de-authing or de-encrypting it on the server side and then presenting it to you. So you can pretty much go to any HTTPS website. It will then parse that website and then forward it on to you in HTTPS. And again, that's all off, That's all thanks to Action Retro. So major kudos to him. That's a really, really good thing. Uh, so yeah, you, you can still use these two web pages, 68k.news and frogfind to get all the things, which is awesome. So you don't need to really worry about the lack of HTTPS support. It doesn't do CSS and it doesn't do JavaScript. And those two things are like pretty much 99% of the web these days. So if you're expecting to get an exact replica of the web page that you're visiting, you know, that's not going to happen. But if you want text only, if you want just the text, uh, then you're, you're in luck. And also, I find that Going to a web page with the text only sometimes can be really nice. It's kind of refreshing because you're like, I don't want all this JavaScript. I don't want all these ads popping up. I don't want all these layouts of funky things. So sometimes when you just want the information, that can actually be a really welcome change. So it's cool. So yeah, check that out. Um, and yeah, so um, there's a few keyboard shortcuts, as it says right here. I won't go through all of them. Um, there's the command line options. So it supports um, some really weird um, setups as well, the Olivetti M24 and the Toshiba T3100 laptop. And you can use inverted screen color mode as well. So if you've got like one of those plasma displays, which looks really bad with the sort of light colors, but really good with the dark colors, you can invert the color scheme. You can see... Um, the limitations here on how to work around HTTPS here, uh, recommending, uh, as it says there, the frog find web service and so forth. So yeah, that's how to do it. Um, you can read more about DOS networking here. Uh, in fact, that will take you to Michael Brutman's webpage. And I think if we go down somewhere here, uh, you can even find my um, video somewhere. Uh, there you go, that's it there. <laughs> how to get the machine working. So yeah, anyway, that's Michael Brutman's um, MTCP stack. So anyway, this is J.H. Howard's MicroWeb uh, repository. You can download the source, of course. Uh, so to download the source, you can just clone this um, GitHub repo, but there is also releases. So if I think if I come down to here, yes, getting started, check out the releases page. Now what it has there is boot disk images for an emulator, but if you want to run it on a native real piece of hardware, 
then there's also an exe file so you don't have to compile anything you can just download that and that is exactly what i did showing my pc over there that's that's how i operated it so i just copied it across the network and everything was good now if you want to know how to copy things across the network using smb and a raspberry pi i've got another video showing how to do that with ether dfs it's by far the easiest and best way to copy things it just works um, which is awesome so check that video out and anyway so this uh, has been updated fairly recently july 9th of 2023 so it's still in active development which is absolutely awesome so yeah check that out um, but i also just to finish this website off i want to show you how epic jh uh, howard so i don't actually know his real full name but um let's just say jh howard i want to show you his overall uh, GitHub page because it's amazing. This The amount of time that uh, he must have spent on <clears throat> making stuff is just amazing. Um, so he's got 32 repos in here. And the most popular ones I've commented on before, I've actually shown Wolfenstein CGA on this uh, very channel. Um, so Wolfenstein CGA is a CGA version of Wolfenstein 3D, which was a game that was obviously only released in uh, VGA before, when it first came out in, in 1992. Obviously, you could only play it on a 286 VGA class machine. This has taken the uh, requirements right down and will work on 8088 based machines. So really allows you to go on old, old hardware. And you, there's a number of modes. There's the composite CGA mode that looks better than the actual four color CGA mode. There's Tandy mode it supports as well and so forth. So that's cool. Um, that's just one of the more popular things that JH Howard has actually got. But there's also a uh, micro city simulator for microcontrollers, like a Sim City kind of thing. Uh, what else did I find? It was, it was a Mega Drive Doom BSP render. I don't think that one's finished yet, but it's really cool. Um, AGI, which is the Sierra Game Interpreter, uh, Adventure Game Interpreter, that's um, an upscaler for images. There's just some really cool things. The Catacombs um, of the Damned, I think that's the Catacomb Abyss kind of games. Um, yeah, so many cool things on here that um, is really been, you know, but I'm just like, how has this guy got time for any of this? It's so cool. Um, yeah, so check his uh, GitHub uh, page out if you're um, if you're interested in any of his stuff. Um, really, really cool stuff. Scum VM as well. I think that's a fork of Scum VM. But uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, and in the meantime, obviously, check out MicroWeb if you haven't already. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you uh, like this kind of stuff, there's lots more stuff like this on this YouTube channel. So please like and subscribe to the channel. I uh, have lots more of this stuff on the way, but also a back catalogue of documentaries about things like bulletin board systems, uh, like um, the man who could have been Bill Gates. I'm talking about um, the, uh, the DOS story. Um, I've got loads of other stuff. So check it all out. Subscribe to the channel. Switch the notification bell to all. And of course, if you want to support the channel, then head over to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Al's Geek Lab. I'm also on Substack as well. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon here on Al's Geek Lab.